Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Well, it's time to start something, start a project that I've been wanting to do for a long time, and it's right here in this box. So let's see what's going on. Well, here it is. Here's what I'm going to do. So, I've been thinking about this, like I said, for quite a while. I'm going to put a, this turbo on my 81Z28. Got limited experience and knowledge, turbocharging, so this is going to be a lot new for me. But I'd like to take you all along with me on this journey. So, we'll look at uh, a little bit of what this turbo's got to offer, sort of the specs on this guy, and then I'll show you some of the other parts I picked up along the way. Here are the specs on the turbo, it's supposed to handle or support 800 horsepower. Turbo style is a T76, compressor AR is 0 0.80, compressor inducer diameter is 76, 0.74 millimeters, compressor exducer diameter is 102.3, compressor trim is a 56, yada 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 all this stuff I don't even know what it really means turbine AR is 0.96 so there was a 0.81 turbine AR and I got the 0.96 I figured the bigger number would be a little bit better so that's what we're gonna run as a turbo so this was a pretty cheap turbo then right I mean cast wheel journal bearing it was 425 bucks shipped to my house from a local company here uh, obviously I don't think it was made in, in Canada but um, I think the price is right. So if this all works out, and this turbo works and everything makes power, then I can always upgrade this to a Precision or a Turbonetics, you know, or some other better quality turbo. But for now, this is going to get me going. This is going to get the turbo on the car. This is going to learn me some turbos because I don't know. Well, let's talk about the good things, the bad things, or the right things and the wrong things about putting a turbo in this 81 Camaro. The right things or the good things are it's got a LS motor and the bottom end is all ARP. I've got ring gap in it somewhere in the, oh I'd have to find the specs, 25 thou in the rings. Rods are all ARP. Um, it is completely rebuilt and it has a decent set of aftermarket pistons. They are a decent set of sealed power hyper eutectics with Teflon coated side skirts. And the compression ratio, even though I milled the heads or decked the heads, 20 thou is still around 975 to 1, which is okay for a turbo. I only plan on maybe going 10 pounds on this thing. So what's wrong with this combination? Well, the first thing is a camshaft. It is not a turbo cam. It's not designed or ground specifically for a turbo. So I have questions whether it's really going to work well. Um, the cam has six degrees of overlap. Overlap is when the intake and the exhaust valve are open at the same time in camshaft degrees of rotation. So you would think, okay, well if I've got my intake and my exhaust open at the same time, then all that pressurized air for my turbo is going to go right out the exhaust. It's not going to fill the cylinder and pressurize the cylinder. So that is obviously a bad thing. However, too little overlap and you're not going to get turbo spool from what I understand. So you're not going to get the benefit of all that pressurized air going into the exhaust and spinning up your turbine because you see the exhaust feeds your turbine wheel and you want your turbine wheel to spool. So with my camshaft I may have real sluggish boost performance or I may have a massive, massive bottleneck out of the exhaust. I don't know. I guess when we go tuning we're going to actually see the inlet pressure versus the exhaust pressure ratio and that's going to tell you where my restriction is if I have any. So that's one of the reasons why I chose a .96 AR on the exhaust side as well, the exhaust housing, because I wanted to eliminate any potential bottlenecking. So we're going to see. So let's take a look at my camshaft and the specs. Here it is here on the top. It's the HR228 353-2S1-12 or camshaft part number 1449. 601. So if we take all those numbers, degrees duration at 50, intake and exhaust, advertised degrees duration, intake exhaust, degrees lobe separation angle, and gross lift, and we put that into a program here, 
Here's our programs. This is a great little website. Camshaft calculator and valve overlap. MGI. So if we plug all that information in here. So intake duration at 50 is 228. Exhaust duration at 50 is 232. Advertised intake duration 290. Advertised exhaust duration 294. Lobe separation angle 112. Advance I put at zero because the camshaft is not advanced or retarded. It is actually put in what they call straight up. Valve lift on the intake 600 and valve lift on the exhaust 600. You can see right down here overlap is six degrees. And here's a website that I'm using the software from. It's camshaft calculator and valve overlap profiles from mgispeedware.com and it's a lot easier than doing math on a piece of paper when you can plug it into a program like this. But if you don't have a computer with you and you're in your shop you can still calculate overlap like this. It's exhaust closing point plus intake opening point which gives you your overlap. So in my case my intake opens at seven degrees before top dead center closes at 41 degrees after bottom dead center exhaust opens at 53 degrees before bottom dead center and exhaust closes at minus one degree after top dead center. So basically you're looking for exhaust closing point and intake opening point and you add them so it's minus one plus seven equals six degrees and that's how you calculate overlap without a computer. So that's one of the things. Second thing is the rear end in the car, it's got 410 gears. Now 410 gears are good for an NA application, but for a turbo, turbos like a little bit of time to spool, a little time to load up. Um, so in first and second gear, I don't know if I'm gonna have much time. Those gears go through pretty quick. It might only be third gear where I see full boost. Not really a big deal. I mean, first and second gear on a street tire, you know, the car has a little bit of traction issues right now. Probably the way I set up the rear end, it is pretty stiff. Um, so I'm not really too concerned about that. I wouldn't mind if it let me or gave me some room to grow, you know, in, in first and second and then really came on in third gear. I don't mind that. Um, that's the second issue is the rear end gearing not being optimal. We'll deal with it. The third issue I'm hoping I get away for a little while is that clutch. Now that clutch has been in two other cars, both of them under boost. One was supercharged, one actually had a single on it just like this. Um, better quality turbo than what I have. But that clutch has obviously um, seen a little bit of abuse. I don't think the guys dropped the clutch, but it's been under a lot of torque and I hope it still holds. When I did receive uh, the transmission, I did look at everything before installing it. I noticed that the input splines of the T56, they almost looked a little bit twisted. There's a bit of a twist to them. So you can tell that there's been some power applied to that tranny and that clutch. So I'm hoping I get away without putting a clutch in it right away. But obviously I've gotten away without putting a clutch in it for a few years. So, you know, this might just finish it off. And here are the rest of the parts that I have for this uh, turbo build. I got these from a buddy of mine. He goes by the name of Turbo Joe. And he's got a 1972 Nova with a six liter in it with twins on it. And that car is pretty raunchy. But before he put the twins on, he actually ran this single turbo kit. And uh, I got a smoking deal on it. So let's take a look at what we got. I mean, first off, we've got this guy here. This looks like a, a turbo oil feed of some sort. Um, some cold side piping here. This is a teal or tile, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but blow off valve. I think it's a 44 millimeter. But I'll have to do some research on that guy right there. Uh, various V bands, etc. 
obviously to connect the uh, hot side piping um, here. I believe most of it's for. We've got another teal or tile wastegate. I think this is a 50 millimeter wastegate. Uh, I have to look into that as well. Um, some silicone couplers, looks like throttle body to three inch. Um, another elbow here, looks like a three inch elbow. A bunch of band clamps. I can already see where this one's gonna go. It's gonna go down over here on this uh, exhaust or dump pipe. Um, various uh, hot side piping here as well. And he's used what looks like sixth gen Corvette manifolds. I'm not sure if these are off of an LS2 or off of an LS3 car, maybe they're the same, I'm not sure. But I can already see an issue with this. If this would be the driver's side facing forward, this is already gonna dump right at my master cylinder. So I think we're gonna have to maybe change that. Uh, more hot side piping here. He's got nice heat shields on there. I mean, he did a great job uh, doing this. This is where your wastegate would go on your merge just before your turbo. It's a T4 flange, because I have a T4 uh, turbo. Um, we've got a merge here to your exhaust. So this is your dump pipe, your four inch, I believe dump pipe going down. And just in case this doesn't work, and I'll show you uh, a little bit of a, a mock up here. I've got these, so these are uh, LS truck manifolds. And I think what I'm gonna end up doing is, is probably using these but uh, let's take a quick look at what I'm talking about here. So if we grab this and walk over to the car. So here's what I'm talking about here with this Corvette manifold. It's gonna need to sit somewhere in here, obviously further back and further down. And that outlet is gonna be on an angle right into my master cylinder. I'm almost sure of it. I'll take off the headers and I'll do a little test fit anyways, but pretty sure it's gonna hit that master cylinder there not desirable. Um, let's see how the truck manifold works then. So the truck manifold is gonna end up sitting like this, forward and down, and I think it's gonna work a lot better actually. With the uh, Corvette manifolds, I would have to relocate my coils as well because of where the manifold sits. With these, I think I can keep my coils where they are and I'll be able to discharge the exhaust in a nice spot in front of the car. The only issue will really be that alternator down there, I hope, but there are some cheap relocation kits or I might even make one myself to move that up into the passenger side up top. And I think there's enough um, wiring here as well to get me there. So Joe obviously was using truck accessories with a truck manifold and I'm not sure what water pump. And here's a picture of the kit installed on an engine. As you can see, this has a truck manifold on it, but uh, the exhaust routing is sort of up and forward or up and over, which is gonna interfere with coils and coil bracketry and I don't wanna move all that. If we look at the passenger side here, that header is also gonna be exiting below the water neck and the water pump. So this should work a lot better for me. There's a lot of real estate here and I could theoretically run a lot of piping through there, run both manifolds facing straight down and I could probably put my turbo right here where this washer bottle is, maybe relocate the battery and have an intake right in here. So I think I'm gonna run both of them down. I basically have this kit for parts, which is a pretty good deal still. All these V-bands I can cut off, re-weld, and I think there's a little bit of fab work, but I think it's gonna be a fun project. Well, that's gonna be about it for this video. I got a lot of work to do, so I better get started. But don't worry, I'm gonna film all of that because I'm still rocking the POV hat here. And if you guys out there, you turbo gurus have some comments or some ideas to make this project go a little bit easier or a little bit of insight, drop a comment down below. I'd love to hear from you. And remember guys, the best time of year to enjoy your project is all year round. Keep the shiny side up, take care. And if you haven't done it yet, hit the subscribe button. It really helps a guy out and I really appreciate it.